In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. And our Chaplain's Report today, it kind of goes back to the story that we did at the top of the hour about the differences in men and women. And we, uh, even though I didn't know that this story was going to come out, kind of talked about this the other day with Abram and, and Sarai. This was the Chaplain's Report on Tuesday about the different roles of men and women and how really God put those in place for a reason. And that when we do not adhere to those roles, bad things happen. I want to kind of go back to the origin here, because there has been a lot said about women and women's roles in the church, and I've noticed that there's not been nearly as much talked about in reverse. And what I mean by that is, I think even though doctrinally I, I have a very clear stance on this, and I believe the Bible means what it says and says what it means, I think sometimes in the church we have a tendency to think that because women's roles are different in the church that they are less equal, and that plays into this stigma that the Bible or Christianity as a religion, it tries to hold women back or is oppressive. I, I mean, the thing is, ultimately, I just think that there's a lot more that our women have to offer than just cooking a, a casserole for a potluck meal. I, I think that that's true, and I think sometimes in the church, because we are afraid of doing something wrong, we tend to underutilize the vast resources and the good that could be done from the female members of the church. And I think that one of the problems also comes from culture. And by that I mean a lot of the things that men have the role to do in the church, whether it be song leading or preaching or anything else that is in a leadership role or a teaching role up in front of the church, in front of everybody, I think the issue is we, pray, we place all the prestige of the church up there. I think that's a problem. I think that's something that we really shouldn't do. And I'm not saying that we should take all prestige away from it, because frankly, I'm flattered when people ask me to go and, and head the Lord's table or to preach a sermon or something like that or to lead prayer. I mean, those are things that are, it's good that people trust me with that. I'm flattered with the fact that they, they think I'm good at it and they want me to do it. That's a good thing. But sometimes I think the issue is because it's up in front of everybody and we think of that as being prestigious, we don't think of other things as being equally prestigious, like going to visit somebody that's sick or taking care of the children all things that women tend to be actually a lot better than men at. And because of that, I think that there is an issue there because worship is definitely something that we ought to put a lot of emphasis on. I'm not saying that we should take emphasis off of that at all. I'm just saying that ultimately, you look at passages like Matthew 25, and you'll notice that what separates the lambs from the goats, in other words, the saved from the lost, it's not who had the best worship, or who led the best opening prayer, or who was best at giving the lesson directly before the Lord's Supper was taken. All that stuff is important too, and Jesus definitely commands it. But it was who visited the prisoners, or fed the hungry. And those are all things that women can do just as well, if not better than men. And so sometimes I think where we put prestige, the things that we are putting prestige on or the things that we place up on a platform as far as service in the church, maybe that's where the issue really lies. Maybe that's the thing that we really need to reconsider. For one, teaching the children, which is something that, that women really are, are a thousand times better at most of the time. It's a talent that, frankly, I admire because I just don't have it. I mean, I'm terrible at, at teaching anybody under the age of about 12, and even that's stretching it some. I mean, I'm a good teacher, but I, I have my wheelhouse, and I know where my teaching works and where it doesn't. That's a talent, and being able to break things down, complicated spiritual matters into very simple lessons, 
that's a talent that I just lack. I don't have, and most men don't have it. And that's part of the reason that women do that. And think about it, long term, that is a far bigger impact in the church than anything that is going to come from me leading a great prayer or preaching a really great sermon. That has a much bigger lasting impact on the church. And to talk about these roles, I think that the best passage to talk about why these roles are in place and why they're important really comes from the book of 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 through 15. So 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 15. A woman must quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness, but I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. For it was Adam who was first created, and then Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman, being deceived, fell into transgression. But the women will be preserved through the bearing of children if they continue in faith and love and sanctity with self-restraint. Now, a lot of people would look at that verse and say, okay, men are supposed to do this and women are not supposed to do this. And that's not an entirely inaccurate reading of it. But what's more important is that it gives us the basis of why. You see, a lot of people that haven't done an awful lot of biblical study, they tend to think that these are just arbitrary rules that you know, people just put in place because they didn't like women and didn't think that they were capable of leading. And because of that, they put these stipulations on to keep women down. That's not what it is at all. You see, God put these in place because he said, there are certain things that women are good at and they should do those things. And there are certain things that men are good at and they should do those things. It goes back all the way to our very creation. Adam was designed to be a leader to Eve. Eve was designed to be a helper to Adam. He wasn't placing prestige on one or the other. As I said earlier in the broadcast, the very word helper, when it says that Eve was created to be a helper for Adam, the word in Hebrew means equal. So they were always designed to be equal. But there are certain things that men are going to be better at and certain things that women are going to be better at. And these roles were not just put in place on a whim or at random, they were designed specifically because that's how men and women operate and think and are designed to work. You see, God's the original designer. And so he has insight that we don't into how we are created. And he designed us in a certain way to fulfill those roles specifically. We're given those roles because they fit our strengths. You know, I was having a conversation not too long ago with a Catholic friend of mine, and we were talking about bishops and the role of bishops, and one of the reasons that I was telling him I disagree with the Catholics on this is because their bishops are not married and do not have children. And if you look in the pastoral epistles, First and Second Timothy and Titus, it is very clear that to, to, to be in the role of a bishop or elder or shepherd or whatever word you use at your church, it all means the same thing, elder, shepherd, and bishop. In that role, you have to not only be married and have a wife that is faithful to the church, you have to have children that are also faithful in the church, and it gives that reason for that in there, is that to be able to look after the church, you have to first be able to look after and maintain and run your own family. And he was very puzzled by this, and he said, but Caleb, you'll You've said that you don't know if you'll get married or not, and you may never get married. Are you telling me that with your biblical knowledge and, and your ability to um, quote scripture like you do, and uh, frankly, I think he was painting me in, in too nice a light because there's so much I don't know, that he said, are you telling me that you are okay with just never being an elder? And I said, yeah. Because if God wants me to fulfill that role, then he will provide a way for that to happen. But nothing gives me the right to subvert that. Even Jesus Christ was not a priest of the Levitical tribe. Now, are we going to suggest that Jesus would not have made a good priest? doesn't matter. God's rule said only Levites fulfill this role. Now, he was a priest in the order of Melchizedek, and the book of Hebrews lays that out very clearly. But my point is, on earth, even though he would have been more knowledgeable than any of the priests, 
and would have been better fit for all of that. He still didn't fulfill the role of priest because that was not his role. That was not the role that God had given him. And he accepted God's authority. He accepted that role. And in the same way, men and women ought to fulfill their roles in the family and in the church because God understands us and put those rules in place to help us and to help us know what roles we will be best at fulfilling. Because ultimately, all of this, this whole conversation comes down to one thing. Do you trust your creator more than yourself? Do you trust the guy that designed men and women and designed us with our strengths and weaknesses to complement one another? Do you trust his wisdom? Do you trust his wisdom in saying that only men that are married and have children that are faithful in the church are allowed to be bishops and only men that meet these certain specifications are allowed to be deacons and so on and so forth? Do you trust God with that or are you going to do your own thinking? I don't know about you, but I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe that he's smarter than me. He has a reason for putting these stipulations on these roles. And if he has, who am I to question that? Ultimately, that's where it comes down with me. And I think that the church and the world would be a better place if they understood that and submitted to God's authority. Stay the course, friends. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.